In 1976, the young Belgian medical worker, Peter Piot, traveled to Yambuku, a remote Congolese village suffering from a devastating outbreak of a mysterious new illness. His work there helped to contain and identify the deadly Ebola hemorrhagic fever, which kills 90% of its victims. The death toll in Yambuku in 1976 was about 300. Peter went on to become one of the outstanding public health leaders of his generation, directing the global fight against HIV AIDS for 13 years as head of UN AIDS. Earlier this year, Peter returned to the once flourishing village. I caught up with him in his director's office at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. And I started by asking how Yambuku has changed since his original visit almost 40 years ago. Today, uh, I must say there's kind of generalized decay. Uh, it was very sad to see. It's a very idyllic place, you know, it's beautiful. It's a, like a postcard nearly but the buildings are kind of uh, imploding, literally collapsing some of them. Um, there are no longer coffee plantations. Um, there's no electricity, no running water, um, no shower, no fridge. And, uh, but the hospital has, um, you know, as a dedicated physician, who I find is a hero because, uh, you know, to work in these circumstances is, is fantastic. It uh, requires a lot of courage and dedication. Going back to Ebola, you managed, you and your colleagues managed to stop the original outbreak, yet Ebola still recurs. We have an outbreak in West Africa now, as you know. Why does this very stoppable disease keep on coming back? We are an accidental host, in a sense. The virus is hiding somewhere, most probably some fruit-eating bats. Um, and, uh, and then uh, we are becoming infected uh, in an accidental way, either during you know, hunting or preparing um, you know, the meat, because bats are, are, are eaten also. And uh, we are not a good host, because the virus kills us within two weeks, basically, 90% of people. And we are not a good host, because then the virus has to jump yet to another yes. uh, host. So we still don't know where the reservoir is. And it's also a disease of poverty because every single outbreak up to now has happened around the hospital where basic hygiene um, you know, uh, were, uh, was not respected, where injections are given uh, with the same needles to different patients and so on. So it, it shouldn't happen. If a patient with Ebola would uh, end up in London in a hospital, for example, I'm quite sure it would not give rise to a major epidemic. Now you're best known as a public health leader for your work on another disease that originated in animals, which is HIV AIDS. And I was interested that you found signs that back in 76 there was HIV infection, although of course no one had heard of the disease then. Yeah, it's very interesting that uh, AIDS was described for the first time in 1981 in the United States. But then uh, we were seeing uh, quite some patients coming from Central Africa when I was still working in Belgium. We went there. I went with some colleagues from, from Zaire, from uh, the US. We found a major heterosexual epidemic. The, um, the dogma was that this is a gay disease, which of course is absurd, you know, from the perspective of a yes. virus, doesn't work. And, um, uh, but then I was always very intrigued, how long has this virus been around? Where is it coming from? And uh, one of the first clues that it had been circulating in Central Africa was because we had preserved our blood samples from 1976 during the first Ebola outbreak. We had tested uh, thousands of people in that uh, region. And when the antibody test became available for HIV in uh, 85, we tested these here and what did we find? There was already HIV um, in uh, Yambuco area um, five years before uh, the disease was described. That was very new. And, but it was at very low level and 10 years later we went back in 86 and it was at the same level. So what we found is that in an area where there isn't amplification of HIV through uh, multiple sex partners and so on, it can remain at very low level. So what, is there any, anything we can learn from these two very different diseases, Ebola and HIV AIDS, that have moved from animals to people about 
how we might treat anything that jumps out of the animal kingdom and bites us in the future. New viruses will continue to emerge. We're seeing it actually uh, in the most visible way with uh, the regular appearance of new types of influenza viruses, yes. usually coming from China. Uh, and that's also originating in, uh, in animals. It's ducks or chickens and sometimes, uh, you know, pigs. You know, the, and uh, so that's the first thing, it will continue. Even if infectious diseases, thanks to antibiotics, vaccines and so on, are on the decline, um, you know, uh, we will continue to see new infections. And secondly is that um, we should think of, um, you know, our health as the health related to the health of animals, of other animals, I should say. We call it one, one health. And uh, many new infections come from animals and we'll see more and more of that. And a third um, you know, example of that is antimicrobial resistance. We are under threat of um, bacteria that may no longer be uh, treatable. We already have it for tuberculosis, some forms, but also for kind of very common infections that you can acquire in a hospital. Yes, the World Health Organization issued a warning just this week, a rather yes. dire warning about the Indeed. need to fight antibiotic resistance. I agree, and I think that's one of the biggest threats to health uh, for the future, because just imagine a world where um, bacterial infections, pneumonia or wound infections and what have you, are no longer treatable. Uh, with the current antibiotics. Surgery, for many indications, heavy surgery would not be possible. Transplants, uh, bone marrow transplants, some uh, cancer treatments. Uh, so they all depend on the fact that we can control infection. So finally, Peter, to sum it all up, how would you describe the state of global public health today? Well, I'm an optimist by nature, otherwise I wouldn't have done in my life what I've done. But I think, first of all, there's no doubt that um, you know, we're leading a longer life and better lives all over. Um, but the bad news, I would say, is that there are new epidemics looming. Um, diabetes, uh, cardiovascular disease is now becoming the top, uh, you know, cause of death also in developing countries. It's no longer a problem of the affluent in developing countries or of um, our type of countries. Obesity is growing. When we talk about malnutrition today in a country like India, we have on the one hand 100 million children or so that are undernourished and then we have soon the largest number of obese people in the same country. And uh, so it's getting more complicated. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you so much.